Hey, I'm Derek with the Coyote Car Channel. You're either here for two reasons. The first reason is because I asked you to come look at this video, or I harassed you to watch this video. And the second reason is because you want to know about lapping valves. So let's get right into it. If you're patriotic, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. But mostly subscribe. So, so let's get started, shall we? This is everything I'm pretty sure that you're gonna need to get this job done. You are going to need some lapping compound. Permatex sells lapping compound, they call it valve grinding compound. You're going to need a tool to grind your valves, like this little thing with the two suction cups on either end. You're going to need all the parts that you took off or that you've ordered to be put on. Note that if you are buying new valves, that you will still want to lap them so that way they are seated. A set of optional tools that you can use that speed up the job really quickly is if you weld up one of these. Um, if anybody wants to know how to make one of these, what it is, is it's a valve compression tool. Go ahead and comment and I will do my best to get a video out as quick as possible. The other alternate tool that you can use is a drill and I find that the drill actually speeds up the process 100. Another thing you want to know is you want to keep all these valves, if you previously pulled them out, in the same order that you pulled them out from that head. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to start putting them in. I find this makes it easier and more of a cleaner area to work with, but go ahead and slide them all into the head. Okay, once you've got them all seated into the head, then you can go ahead and move this other stuff aside, and I'm going to do that right now. Then what you want to do is you want to take your valve lapping compound, here it is up close so you can see what it is that I'm using, and you want to open this thing up, it'll have a little seal in there, and just as always, break that seal. And you might get a little overspill, you're going to want to have a paper towel out. So the traditional way of doing this is to get your little plunger, pop out the valve that you're about to lap and grind. and. As you can see, we've got some here that's kind of float over. So you just want to get it up on the lip that's going to be contacting that surface. And set that to the side. Then you'll see here that we've got kind of a little bit of a mess on it. So we're going to kind of work that around just on that lip surface right there. Just like that and get, you know, a decent amount of coverage on it. Okay. Then what you're going to do is, without touching, I'm going to bring you guys in. You're going to grab it by the stem, carefully slide it in like that, right down in there, just like that. You want it to touch all the way down. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this and bring you guys back out again. You're going to attach that suction cup right on there like that, just like the caveman. Start at the top and work your way down. And then ever so often, lift up and push it back in and work it down. And I don't like this method because the suction cups tend to fall off, but that's how one way of doing it. My way of doing it is a lot simpler. Take a piece of paper towel and wrap it around. Then, take the drill, open it up all the way, hold, hold this side here, and slide it over that. And then, spin it into the chuck, make sure you don't bend it. And then what you're going to do, is you're going to spin it, and you're going to lift off, and then push it back down, and lift off. You're going to increase the rate of speed and then after 
a few seconds, maybe 15 seconds of doing that, 10 seconds. Whenever it starts to get a little quieter, then you can stop. Let's take a look. The drill slipped off, but that's okay. Let's take it out of here and see what we got. So what you're going to notice is kind of a milky substance that that's going to turn into. You're going to want to wipe that out of here. You don't want that to get down into your intake manifold or anything like that because it can actually start to eat away. And then you're going to wipe this down. And what you'll notice, grab the next valve over so you can see the difference, is there is a white line now on one of them. So this is the one that we just did. That's the one that we haven't done just yet. And it's also the same in here. Here, there's a white line. On this one, there's a faint white line. That means that the valve's been seated. So you can set this back in here. And you will notice when you do this that when you try and turn it, it has a lot more resistance. And it's because you've formed a seat. So I'm going to do the rest of these and then we'll come back with the next part. And if you're asking yourself, but Derek, how do I get all these parts clean? Well, all you gotta do is go in to the description of the video. I'm gonna have links for all the videos on how you can clean the heads of the engine, how you can clean the valves, how you can clean all the parts of the engine, pretty much. I haven't gotten to all of them yet, but as far as the heads go, and getting the heads prepped and ready and painted and all that good stuff, in the description. Okay, let's get back to it. Once you're all done with that, go ahead and put the lid on your valve compound and make sure that's on there tight because this stuff will dry out. And if you ever plan on doing this again, you're gonna need this. Then we're gonna grab our spring cap and the retainer lid. We're gonna take this whole assembly and set it on here. Now the way that you could tell the exhaust port, which this is an exhaust port, from the intake ports is the retainer caps are different. The exhaust ones have um, a bearing in here and more of the high performance ones are different than these, but as far as these go, these are your intake and these are your exhaust. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your exhaust you're going to set it on there like that. The next thing you're going to grab is your tool of choice. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I can teach you guys how to make this if you just uh, go ahead and comment um, that if somebody wants it, then I can show you how to do it. Um, it consists of two pieces. This piece sits over and it kind of forks over the hole here so it slips past the valve rod. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your nut and you're going to thread it on. Alright. And then what I do is I just take my drill. Keep an eye right here, right in the center, and make sure that you are all lined up so that way the spring and all that slips over the top of it. I want you to get to a certain spot. Tighten down some, you want to tighten the rest of it down by hand. Okay, so once we have um, the valve compressed, what we're going to do is we're going to lift it up just a little bit. I'm sticking my finger into the exhaust port so that way I can lift up and we're going to slide our keepers down onto the valve rod and then what we can start to do is we can start to loosen up the assembly. We want to keep our eye on that and make sure that those keepers are staying where we need them. Start backing it off. Just like that. Until 
until it's all the way backed off. I've almost got it here. And then we're just going to repeat that process all the way down the line. But that's how it should look, and I'll give you a close up of that. So that's how it should look in there, just like that. So I'm going to do the rest of these, and I'll get right back with you. So now that they're all in, you can put these on if you want. Um, these are the rockers, the stock rockers. And you just set those on first. And I'm putting them on backwards right now. I don't really care. They're not upside down. I have a reason. The reason is because after this next part, so now you're going to put your swivel washer. I, I think I just coined that name for it, but it does just that. You put it on here and you're going to slide them all the way down inside of these rockers. And so I'm just going to do that. kind of give you an idea of which direction I didn't really specify when I started. Um, this curved area here needs to go down into the rocker and the flat side is on top so the nut can sit on top of it and this can tilt back and forth. So what essentially this does is there's a rod to this side that pushes up when the cam spins and it opens up the valve on the other side and then it closes. And then just go ahead and throw all of your nuts onto the studs. Just go ahead and get them started. The reason why I put them in upside down is because this is the highest point this has to travel in order to move around. So you just want to make sure that you tighten these down if you're just going to store them or even if you're going to install them. You know, I mean, you could do it just finger tight like that. I mean, that's fine, but I'm gonna tighten them down just a little bit more. And, and that's that. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, if you like this video too, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button right there. Yeah, that, no, this one right here. Yeah, and then you could hit the bell icon too. Whether you liked it or you didn't, it would really help me out. Whether you want to help me out or you don't want to see me succeed and you want to see me fail, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you'll see what happens. And yeah, like it too and comment. Tell me how much you didn't like this video or how much you did like this video. Uh, any kind of feedback would be great about now, whether I should just quit and stop doing Facebook and YouTube videos. Uh, whatever you think, go ahead and you know, use your voice. Uh, I'm right here.